let the peace, love and blessings of Jehovah God and his Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Divine Call Everlasting Gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, Leader Olumba Olumba Abu, the Supernatural Teacher. First lesson, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17 to 18. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Second lesson, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 17 to 20. But as God are distributed to every man, as the Lord are called everyone, so let him walk, and so ordain I in all churches. Is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called into uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing. But the keeping of the commandments of God, let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Golden text, Luke chapter 9, verses 61 to 62. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee. But let me first go and bid them farewell, which are at the home of, of my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plough, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Introductory spiritual chorus A call was extended to Jonah to go and preach the word of God so that the entire world may be saved. Peter was a fisherman but he left the fishing and followed Christ for the preaching of the gospel. Quote, Beloved, the songs just rendered and the text just read out to you have summarized the theme of our gospel today. Have you now seen that the fields are all ripe? Have you not seen the laborers? Spiritual quarrels. I have planted my farm and gathered my laborers unto e. Therefore, in the farm and work. Beloved, have you heard the lyrics of that song? Who do you suppose are the laborers? It is you who are the laborers. The world is the field. It is ripe. Enter ye therefore into the world and gather the sheep of God. Adhere to the dictates of your spirit. Everybody has an assignment in this kingdom. Therefore, stand firm and hold fast to your assignment. Whatever duties you perform, constitute the work God provided constitute the work of God provided they are done with all your art unto God. Whatever you do should be done with one mind and truthfulness to God. If you are involved in farming and and marital activities, more so during your leisure time, whether playing in the field, walking on the road, standing somewhere, in fact, whatever you are engaging is done with one mind and complete commitment, you are doing that to God. God has never at any time, God has, God had never at any point in time made a mistake. 
Before he extended this call to you, he had already spelled out your assignment and provided the tools for you to carry out the assignment. Therefore, you cannot pretend that you do not know your assignment. Listen to the dictates of your spirit and hearken unto it. God is only one entity, but he is an embodiment of everything in life. He is you. He is within you. He is your thought and action and much more. He is everything, although he is only one entity. Whatever one does in this life, it is God who does it. That is the reason you are advised to do everything wholeheartedly. When you are kind or humble to somebody, do so with the whole of your heart. When you are taking care of patients, do so wholeheartedly with reverence to God. When you are bestowed with the ability to reveal God's glory to men of substance in the world, no matter what your abilities are, carry out your assignment wholeheartedly, for by doing so, you are doing it to God. If you are endowed with the skills of preaching the good tidings of this kingdom, do so with all your heart. Everybody in this kingdom possesses various gifts and assignments. Therefore, whatever you find yourself doing, do it with all your might. If you are endowed with the ability to be patient, plunge your whole body into patience. Are you endowed with the gift of expressing kindness and kindness to strangers? Then concentrate on your whole then concentrate your whole life in showing kindness to strangers without regret. If you are endowed with the ability of counseling people about this kingdom, do not relax. Go on doing it, for that is your assignment. When Peter and other disciples were called, they were not quite firm. It was not until when our brother Paul came and encouraged them that they began to be unshaken in God's way. Some of you were called to come and strengthen other people's faith in this kingdom, but you are ignorant of this fact. Go ye then and accomplish your assignment. Go and reveal brotherhood to the entire inhabitants of the world. For this assignment has been apportioned to you in this kingdom. Some of you are given the ability of becoming vegetarians. But you have all along continued in the consumption of meat and fish. Now is the appointed time for you to carry out your assignment and also teach others to do the same. If you are endowed with the ability to be faithful to God, do not tremble. Rather, hold fast to it so that you will be exemplary for others to emulate by becoming faithful to. There are some who are gifted with wisdom, but because they are spiritually blind, they outrightly refuse to impart this knowledge to the other people. Henceforth, this reluctance has been removed from you. You are enjoined to go out far and near and impart this wisdom to others. The twelve disciples of Christ were imbued with the twelve powers of man in order that they will go out and impart same to the people so that the glory of God will be made manifest. When these powers were given to them, they formed groups and walked together to disseminate the word of God to others. Man's emptiness, God's supremacy. I want to bring your realization that all the things you profess to be doing are being done by God. The unknown reason why he allows you to do all, all those works is because God is liberal. 
he is not selfish. If he should take back the power from you, you will be rendered invalid. All the abilities in you are just talents. They are the Holy Spirit at work within you. If they vanish, you will be reduced to an imbecile. You are not responsible for anything happening. It is God, the, it is God, the Holy Spirit, who is responsible. If a talent infused in you is withdrawn from you, instantly you become deaf or dumb and lifeless. It is therefore completely senseless for anybody to say he does not know his assignment. Since so long as someone is living, his assignment is made known from birth. This knowledge has eluded the entire world. The ignorance has caused terrible suffering to man and they as they attempt to occupy one position or the other that is not meant for them. Some people are endowed with the ability to trade, others with marriage, some with the ability to be civil servants, etc. All these abilities are natural. They are inborn. It does not entail learning to know what your talent is. You do not need to suffer to acquire it. The moment you are set to achieve it, it becomes relatively easy for you. The problem is that you do not hold fast to what your talent is. You are advised to be steadfast in whatever you identify as your talent. Do not force yourself into doing what you see another person is doing. If you know a person who is kind or carrying out another thing, do not force yourself into doing same. Since that was not meant for you, if you have been assigned to preach the gospel, do not relent in doing so. Strive on and do not be attracted by what another person is doing. If you are called into this kingdom when you were unmarried or in penury, you are entreated to maintain such position. Do not intend to get married or seek wealth. And conversely, if you were called as a married man, you are to maintain such a position. Do not abandon your matrimonial home. Let me revisit our first Bible lesson. First lesson, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17 to 18. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. If you are called into this kingdom to preach the gospel, concentrate on that. Do not introduce your carnal or academic knowledge into the divine kingdom so that the suffering and teachings of Christ will not be in vain. The people of the world regard the teachings of Christ as an unprofitable venture, but to us, being followers of Christ, it constitutes power and wisdom. Every talent that somebody is endowed with strictly belongs to that person. It is not transferable or acquired by another person. For instance, someone is endowed with the gift of preaching the gospel. And when you who do not possess a similar gift try to copy him, you will definitely not succeed because it will be odd and unfamiliar to you. The same thing is applicable to other talents. This was responsible for the creation of many pews in this kingdom. Do not dwindle in your upsurge. Rather, maintain your position. 
Do not wander from one angle to another. Do not seek to acquire another person's talent because everybody is naturally endowed with his talent. So many people in this kingdom have not known their assignment. For that reason, they are seen moving from one direction to the other, not being able to accomplish anything. They are seen in one better or the other, causing confusion, claiming falsely to be visionaries, begging for money, and moving from one point to the other. How can you force yourself to be what you actually are not? Therefore, it is most fortunate and interesting to know one's assignment and stick to it. Testifying in the battle is a talent. If you are not endowed with this talent, you will be unable to testify no matter how hard you try to do so. But there would not be any stress if you have the talent. Our second lesson should now be re-examined. Second lesson, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 17 to 20. But as God had, as, but as God had distributed to every man, as the Lord had called every one, so let him walk. And so ordain I in all churches. Is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any call in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing. And uncircumcision is nothing. But the keeping of the commandments of God. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Divine Dresser. God is greatly intelligent. He knows what is suitable for every man. Before he endows you with a certain talent, he knows the relevance of the talent and what it will be utilized for. It is a common occurrence that you often tend to gather from where you have not sown. Whatever is your talent, hold fast to it. In whatever condition, you were called into this kingdom, maintain it. Whether you are rich or poor, married or single, intelligent or virgin, etc., just remain where you are. Do not covet anything not belonging to you. Be contented with your gift and diligently carry out the assignment given to you. Importance is not attached to being rich or poor or virgin or visioner or preacher in this kingdom. What is beneficial is practicing the injunction of the Holy Spirit. Whether you are called into this kingdom while you are a president or a governor or a doctor or whatever position, you are advised to remain in that position and put into practice the injunctions of God. Do not wait until the expiration of your tenure before you begin to put the injunctions of God into practice. If the call came to you when you had a court case, do not wait until the case is over before you begin to carry out your assignment. Do it at the same time. Whatever, whichever condition you find yourself, do not wait for such condition to be over. Just start doing the work of God because it is best known to God for allowing you to be in that condition. Recall that Peter was called when he was a fisherman. He abandoned the fishing business and followed Christ. A similar thing happened to Paul. He was a lawyer and when the call was extended to him, he immediately abandoned his profession and carried on with the work of Christ. Peter and Paul did not first go and look for money as is common among you. Wherever or whenever the call is extended to you, no matter the situation you are in, whether rich or poor, 
A bishop or a pope, do not hesitate to hearken to that call. Because when you are reluctant, thoughtful, and delaying, you are paying, you are paving your way to doom. Do not consider the fact that you are lame or you are dumb or blind or illiterate or literate. Just hearken to the call for when God sends you on an errand, he goes before you to accomplish the task for you. Remember the young lad who intimated Christ that he wants to follow him but that he should be permitted to go and bury his father before coming to follow him. The question is, since that young man went to bury his father, has he returned? It is popularly said that a wise man perceives danger from afar and takes precaution, but a foolish man will wait until such danger draw nearer to him let us look at the golden text again golden text luke chapter 9 verses 61 to 62 and another also said lord i will follow thee but let me first go and bid them farewell which are at home at my house and jesus said unto him no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of god being adamant is disastrous. Beloved, have you heard the content of the text? Spiritual, co spiritual chorus. Whenever he calls you, hearken unto him. Do not hesitate so that you may not lose your life. When the call is extended to you, Young to the young man, they claim the time is not yet right, that the call is too early. They cannot imagine themselves forsaking the world at such a tender age. They will insist on remaining in the world and wallow in sinfulness. And when they have met disaster, you see them running here and there. This same scenario, this same scenario also applies to the old man. In order to evade any punish, any unpleasant happening in your way, you are advised to hearken to the call anytime it is your turn to drive home this point. This illustration will be immense will be of immense help. Illustration The Disobedient Widow There was once a widow who had four children, two were boys and two were girls. One day, the call was extended to her by God to render services to him. The widow presented excuses which included her plans to educate her four children to a reasonable level before serving God. The call was made to her again and she put forward another excuse that she has to complete her petty trading before serving God. The voice of the Lord spoke to her the third time, revealing that her assignment is Revealing that her assignment in this world does not include engaging in the mundane activities of this world, but it was to render services to God. She was still unyielding to the call, her reason being that she has to educate her children, get them married, and also erect a family house. She actually went along trying to get the children settled and married. And God in his peculiar way of doing his things exercised patience 
but kept an eye on her until she achieved all her heart's desires and became so prosperous up to the point that she started attending cocktail and disco parties. One day, when she had come back from a party, something unexpected happened to her and she died. When she got to the world beyond, the same voice spoke to her again. This time she was told that she died as a result of her refusal to hearken to the voice of God. A day after her death, the first son also died. On the third day, her second son also passed away until the four children died. One after the other, they were buried beside their mother's graves and spiritually their soul were all packed in a tiny cage. What befell that widow is exactly the kind of doom that awaits those who are stubborn to the voice of God. Remember when Paul was preaching, he mentioned that those who will inherit the kingdom of God neither marry nor are given in marriage. There was a certain young girl who had made plans to get married, but when she heard this gospel, she immediately and completely changed her mind about the marriage and decided to remain a virgin. For the sake of the kingdom of God, everything possible was done to persuade her to accept the marriage, but it did not yield fruit. She was imprisoned and all forms of punishment meted to her but she remained adamant. She held firm to her decision. Her intended bridegroom tried all avenues possible to seduce her and get her this virgin, but, she plans, but his plans did not produce fruit. This gives a precise picture of how a person called by God should be, and not when you get the call you begin first by thinking of the mundane things of this world. I shall not be tedious with you. It is true that a stroke of the cane is enough for the wise. Let those who have ears to hear, let them hear what the Holy Spirit has imparted to the world. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.